Hello, everybody, and welcome to the brass ensemble that's part of the OSU Corvallis Symphony Orchestra. I'm Marlon Carlson. I run this crew, and we're going to show you a few things today. Uh, we have here a wonderful brass ensemble consisting of four horns. We then have a trumpet, and we have four trombones and two tubas. They're all in back of me. So I'm going to ask the horn player to play a few notes at the top of your register and a few notes at the bottom. How about the trombone? The tuba is the biggest of these instruments and must be heavy to carry around. So why did you pick the tuba? I picked the tuba because when I did my audition, I could naturally buzz low notes. And I thought it was really cool because it was really big. So I get a lot of exercise out of carrying it and it's fun. The next piece by our brass ensemble, members of the Corvallis OSU Symphony Orchestra, is by the French composer Paul Duca, composer of the Sorcerer's Apprentice, a piece which many of you know, I'm sure. This is a fanfare from his opera, La Peri, and it has a couple of very nice components to it. Obviously the fanfare part of it. Uh, and we'll hear just a little bit of what that sounds like at the beginning. <laughs> piece is a very beautiful lyrical spot. The melody is quite stepwise in motion and it's in keeping with uh, most good music, most music in fact, that does have contrasting parts. So let's hear this lyrical part from this interlude by Paul Ducat. <laughs> ensemble here is putting a little rise on this, two little rises and then a falling off. It's not marked in the music. This is called interpretation. I want them to now play this excerpt absolutely flat. No dynamic contrast. Let's add a little spice uh, and have some dynamic contouring. Listen what a difference it makes. Very good. So we're going to do the whole work now. It's about three minutes. And it's a marvelous piece, and I'm sure you'll be listening for these points that we brought out in this introduction. <laughs> Thank you. 
So here we are with the woodwind section of the Corvallis OSU Symphony Orchestra. It's not all of the woodwinds, of course, given the circumstances, but we have a pretty good representation. So if you point over there, we have two oboes looking to your left, and then we have four clarinets, and we have four bassoons. Normally, we'd all, we would also have some horns in here, but they are not allowed to play indoors. So as our first piece, we're going to introduce to you a serenade of Mozart. Mozart is the name you all well know. In this case, the serenade is four movements. We're going to play a bit, uh, a bit of each one of them, but we're also going to play most of the first movement. So the first movement is in a typical sonata form. That's probably something you don't lie awake nights thinking about, but it has a rather robust first theme and then a very dolce singing second theme. So let's hear what these themes sound like in the first oboe. In contrast to that triadic theme, the oboe also gets to play the second theme, which is rather lyrical and stepwise. Two. So we're going to now move on and show you what some of the other movements look like before we play the entire first movement. So here's the second movement of this four movement serenade. Normally it sort of goes medium fast, kind of slowish, and then a minuet in three, four time, and then a quick last movement. So here's what the andante sounds like, the second movement of this Mozart serenade. One, two, three. <laughs> that again for you. Notice how calm and peaceful this is. Mostly stepwise motion again. Let's do that one more time. Beautiful melodies singing out there in the clarinet. One, two, three. <laughs> Now we're going to move on to the third movement, which is a minuet. Now there's a difference of opinion on how quickly these minuets should be played. We've been playing it in one, and we will demonstrate for you how that goes. It's pretty, pretty uh, expeditiously, pretty vigorously. Here we go. One, two, three, one. <laughs> the first time. Now let me demonstrate for you how another group of musicians would play it differently. They would do it in three. Let's see how our band does it with three. I'll give you one free bar. One, two, three. Okay, that's kind of boring, isn't it? Let's pick the tempo up a little bit, a little quicker, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> Lastly, we'll give it, uh, we'll play this in our version, which is in a quick one. Two free bars. One, two, three. Very good. So you have 
to decide how you like it. All right, now we're going to move to the last movement, which is a theme and variations. We're not going to play the whole thing, of course. But we want to end up with one of the variations that focuses, or rather uh, features, the bassoons. So you listen very carefully when you hear the bassoons taking over the texture of the orchestra. We will take the repeats, two, three bars. come to the second and final work featuring the woodwinds of the symphony orchestra. This piece is by Ludwig van Beethoven, who lived roughly in the same place as Mozart, that is in Austria, Vienna, born 15 years later, and was one of the, probably the most significant composer in the history of music to change the whole ethos of music and the procedures and everything else. That's debatable, but that's one opinion. So we're going to play the serenade, the first moment of this serenade, and I want to point some things out. First thing we're going to do is play the first eight bars or so. Okay, I want you to notice in particular this little squiggly figure that occurs in the oboe. Let's have the oboe play it by herself. Okay, good. Okay, so you're going to hear this uh, quite a few times. So those of you that would like a little bit of a memory challenge, see if you can count the number of times you hear this little squiggly figure throughout this movement. We're going to play the whole thing for you now.
that's really neat about this quartet by Shostakovich that we just played is that there are four notes that go throughout the whole piece that represent Shostakovich himself, the composer. And he actually spelled his name out in the notes. Let's hear what those four notes sound like. So we hear this right at the beginning of the piece. Let's start from the beginning so they can hear I'm Marlon Carlson, music director of the Corvallis OSU Symphony Orchestra. For this program, for the children, fifth graders of Benton County, we're putting together excerpts from three separate groups, woodwinds, brasses, and strings. To my left here is the teaching assistant, assistant conductor of the string orchestra, Ellie Phillips. She's a senior in music at Oregon State University, and she's been doing a fabulous job with this string group. So I am going to have two questions for Ellie. Number one, how is it that you got into music very briefly? And then number two, what is the significance of this Shostakovich Chamber Symphony, which you're going to be conducting here in a few minutes? Yeah, so... Um... Dr. Carlson asked how I became a musician and especially how I came to be conducting this orchestra at OSU. And yeah, so I grew up in a family of musicians, so I was fortunate to be exposed to music at a very young age. And I remember hearing Bach's St. John Passion as a young child, and I immediately wanted to play violin after hearing it. I didn't want to sing, I didn't want to play organ, I wanted to play violin, I don't know what that says. Um, but that's when I decided I was going to be a professional violinist, was after hearing Bach sing John Passion at the age of three. So, yeah, I, I played in Portland Youth Philharmonic in high school, where I was very fortunate to receive good training as an orchestral musician, and it's from playing in PYP that I ended up here as a student of Dr. Carlson and it's been really quite a privilege to conduct this orchestra because it's an unusual ex opportunity for an undergraduate student. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very thankful for the opportunity to conduct an ensemble. As to the Shostakovich and its significance, it's really remarkable work not only in the string quartet repertoire but in the music of the 20th century as a whole. Um, Shostakovich wrote the string quartet in three days, which is surprising considering that it's considered one of his masterworks. He wrote it in Dresden, where he was composing the film score simultaneously for a film about the bombing of Dresden in World War II. And the quartet is subtitled To the Victims of Fascism and War. So it's a very dark piece of music, and it expresses really some of the deepest griefs of everyone who survived through the horrors of the Second World War and also of the Stalinist regime. That's very good. Thank you.